Okay, all right. Good day, everybody. And um, welcome to this uh, webinar hosted by Link. Unfortunately, we had some uh, technical difficulties with the power outage, like one minute before we were about to start. So uh, I apologize for that. But um, if you have anything else scheduled later on, um, we will uh, record this and upload it to uh, the uh, Facebook event so you can uh, look at this uh, again afterwards but it's more interactive if you stay here now and uh, do these exercises with me so who am I my name is Jacob and I'm the uh, vice head of uh, the research and analysis committee here at link and I'm also team leader for the equity research uh, team within RNA and uh, today we'll go through the basics of Excel and uh, this webinar is, as I said before, is going to be interactive, where we will solve exercises together, which is uh, why you need to download the Excel file posted on Facebook if you haven't already. And uh, why Link is hosting this webinar is because if you would like to pursue a career within finance, um, it's a huge advantage if you already have experience uh, using Excel, since you'll be using it a lot during your career to build financial models and to analyze financial data. And um, yeah, some of you may know much of these basics already and uh, some of you may not know anything at all, but hopefully everything or everyone participating in today's lecture will learn something new and useful. And um, if you're using uh, uh, Windows, uh, I recommend you to try the uh, shortcut functions that we have here. And um, we're gonna start now uh, with uh, the first worksheet, which is the keyboard shortcuts here. And uh, an important note is that if you have a MacBook or another other Apple product, these shortcuts, as far as I'm concerned, won't work, uh, which is why I'll be performing the exercises both with the keypad and with the cursor. And uh, yeah, so we'll go through the shortcuts as we work uh, work our way through the exercises. Um, and our first one is going to be this one. Um, and it's used to navigate between these uh, other workspaces or worksheets. And uh, uh, of, with you who have a Windows uh, computer or a PC, you can use the control page up and down uh, shortcut. So you just press control and then page down to move to the next slide, which is overview. And if you have a MacBook, you just simply click these. Um, so yeah, let's start. We're gonna start with the basics. So now we're here at the overview worksheet and each row, as you can see, is uh, marked with a number. And uh, for example, we have marked row 18 here and uh, each column is uh, named with a letter. So this column here is the column I and all of these squares that you see here are called cells. So how do they name the cells? Well, it's pretty easy. They name this cell, cell I18, because it's column I and row 18. And this cell, F7, because it's column F and row seven. Pretty easy. So far, so good. Um, when navigating with the keyboard, you uh, use the arrows 
and um, if you would like to uh, navigate faster you can press and hold control and uh, use the keyboard which will make the uh, excel jump to the nearest cell with uh, anything of value inside of them so you can navigate pretty fast uh, with the keyboard and um, to mark a specific area you can uh, use the uh, shift button and then press and hold that and then you use the arrows to mark a specific area so and if you don't uh, have a if you have a macbook and use the cursor you simply just click and hold and drag like this uh, so yeah it's very basic in the, in the beginning but we're gonna come to the exercises soon so hang in there and uh, we have one function uh, named control G uh, which is the go-to function so if we would like to move to a specific cell let's say we want to move to cell F7 we press control G and we will have this square right here and you'll type in as a reference F7 and press enter and that will dictate the uh, that will make the cursor move to cell F7 automatically and if you don't uh, if you can't use the keyboard you can just type it here in the top left corner so F7 enter pretty easy to zoom in and out uh, we have a function uh, the scroll function and we use control and then we scroll and then we can zoom in and out of Excel and it will zoom into this the, the cell which you have marked so if I have marked cell I18 that will uh, place in the top left corner so great and uh, now we're gonna navigate to the next worksheet which you learned before and to do that you use control page down and we come to the formulas so this is where it gets uh, a bit more interactive if you aren't using a keypad you zoom by clicking here uh, zoom in and out so it's not that hard but i'm going to use the keypad and um, to increase the efficiency when working in excel there's a lot of useful uh, formulas and commands to use and we have some tasks here, uh, which we're gonna perform. So we're gonna use some of the formulas and commands to solve the tasks to the right. So here we have our data, which is different persons having different salaries. And here we have the uh, useful formulas. Uh, so our first task is calculate the total salary. You always begin uh, uh, writing a formula the same way so you always start start with an equal sign and that is to for excel to know that you're going to type a formula because otherwise you can just type whatever you like and excel will not recognize it's a formula uh, so always start with an equal sign and if you navigate with the keypad you just use the arrows as said before and you can mark specific areas but that's not what we're going to do now because now we're going to use a function or a formula uh, and the formula we're gonna use is the sum function. So we write an equal sign and we write sum and you can press tab on your keypad or press with your cursor on double click on sum here. So I'm gonna use tab. And now Excel knows that we're gonna use the sum function. And then we're gonna, our task is to calculate the total salary. So we're just gonna summarize all of these salaries and to do that we're going to use a uh, useful command here which is to mark a specific area which i thought taught you before and it's by holding shift and use the arrows so we begin at the top press down shift and use the arrow to move down as you can see that takes up not that much of time but you can be faster and you can be faster by pressing shift control and pressing down on the keyboard once that will make excel mark all the data which is like nearby or uh, yeah you get what i mean and if you don't use the uh, keypad you just write an equal sign take your cursor mark the area and press enter uh, oh yeah now i forget the function so equal sign sum mark the area 
with your cursor if you don't use the keypad and press enter. So Excel is basically a pretty advanced calculator and now Excel has calculated the total salary for, for all the persons we have here. So we're just gonna move on and use these uh, formulas. Uh, it's the same principle for everything, but you use different formulas. Uh, so we're gonna calculate the average salary, start with an equal sign. We're gonna use this function here, average function. So equal sign, average, oh, sorry, average. And uh, you can press tab. And once again, shift control, press down on your keypad and you will mark the entire area. It's really fast. And you can close, close the parenting and press enter and Excel will calculate. So if you've done this right, you would have 67.4375 here. So do that. And uh, meanwhile, we move on to calculating the median. So we're gonna use the median function, which is this one. Median tab, mark the area. If you're using the cursor, you can mark it like this. Press enter. And now Excel has calculated the median. So calculate how many employees. We're gonna count the number of employees and we have different uh, formulas for counting that one. Uh, and uh, I, I've seen in the chat that it looks like my screen sharing has frozen. Can anyone see? Is it working? Oh, the screen is not shared. Okay. We'll see. Just give me a second here. Sorry, we have some technical difficulties here. This is not our day. <laughs> uh, we'll see here. Just give me one second. Let's see if I can. Rejoin Zoom here. Really sorry for these guys. So how about now? Can you see my screen now? Looks like it's working. Yeah, sorry about that. But hopefully you understand that the, the principles of, um, of Excel now, uh, or about of using formulas. Um, so now we're going to calculate how many employees uh, that we have here. And uh, to do that, we're going to use the, uh, the, the count A formula. So we use equal sign, count A. And as we did before, we mark this specific area, control shift arrow down. Or actually, we're going to calculate the persons here. So control shift arrow down, enter and we have 16 persons. I'm just gonna There we go. Uh, so now Excel calculated how many employees we have. Now we're gonna find the lowest salary. And to do that, we're gonna use the min and max functions here. So we're gonna type the lowest, which is the min function, press tab, move the cur cursor to the numbers, Control shift arrow down, enter. And Excel will find the lowest salary, which is 20. 
And for finding the fourth highest salary, we're going to use the large and small functions, which you can see here, to the equal sign. And since it's the fourth highest, we're going to use the large function, tab. And here, Excel would like us to first highlight the array, which is this one. Uh, control shift down, as we've used before. Then you're going to have to type a semicolon. So that one. And then Excel is asking for a K. And K is the number. Like, and for us, it's the fourth highest salary. So we're going to basically type four. And if you would want to find the highest salary, you would type one and you, know, you get the deal. So we type four and we press enter. So now Excel found the fourth highest salary for us. So if you've done every, everything the way I did, you would have get these results. But as you know, don't worry because we will publish all the solutions on the event uh, site afterwards. So uh, you don't have to worry at all. Uh, last tasks of the formulas, new scenario. Every employee will get a bonus of, and we're gonna type 40 for an example. And we're gonna start with person A. So what is person's A total salary if person A gets a bonus of 40? Then we're gonna use the equal sign as always. We're gonna move the cursor here. We're gonna press plus because we wanna add the base salary to the bonus salary. And by doing this, this is just, as I said before, Excel is like a calculator. So it will calculate the salary, uh, the total salary. But what we also wanna do is that we wanna lock this cell. And to lock the cell, uh, we press F4 while uh, having our keypad or having the cell marked. So press F4 and it will make the cell go there uh, or look like that. And then you can press enter. And why we want to do this is because now we want to be fast to calculate uh, these ones. Um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to use uh, mark this one, shift, and move down to the bottom. And then we're going to fill down is our next uh, function, which, is, which we do by pressing Control D. And then the magic happens and Excel will calculate all the persons, all the employees, total salary and uh, with the bonus. So yeah, that's, that's it for the formulas. Now we're going to move on to the if functions and we're going to use Control page down to do that. But first, if you are using a cursor, uh, I would just like to say that uh, since you cannot use the commands, which, which I use, if you use a cur cursor, you just drag in this little uh, square here and Excel will calculate everything for you. So it's not that simple, uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> so next uh, worksheet, control page down or just click here, if functions. So if formulas can be useful in various situations to make your life easier, uh, the tasks are used to exemplify some scenarios. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna use the if function to solve these tasks. So the task is if you have closed at least four deals during the year, you should get a bonus of 500,000 Swedish crowns. Seems like a nice bonus. And to do that, we all start again with an equal sign. We write if, because that's the form we're going to use, tab. Now Excel would like us to uh, do a logical test, or Excel is asking for that. And we can see here in our little sheet here, formula to use, they are, they're asking for the first cell, which is closed deals. So this person has closed four deals, so we press that cell. And this function is based so that if four, is bigger or equal to the amount of deals we would like. And that is also four, because if you have closed at least four deals during the year, you should get a bonus. Then you press, you make a semicolon and Excel is asking for the value if true. 
which means the value you will get if you have closed four deals or more. And that is the base salary plus the bonus salary. And with the bonus salary, we also need to lock this cell. So when, while you have your cursor here, you press F4 to lock it. And then again, uh, we use, need to have a semicolon. And now Excel is asking for the value if false. So if the person has closed below four deals during the year, they will only get their base salary, which is 300,000 there. So you can mark that and you can press enter. And right now Excel has calculated the base salary for person A. And as we've said before, now we're gonna calculate it for all these others. So we press shift, move down and use uh, control D and Excel will fill out everything for us here. And if you're using the cursor, you remember you just drag the uh, little square there. So there we go, moving on. Next task, if you have at least 50 points on the test, you will pass. If 49 or lower, you will fail. Person A has exactly 50 points. And now we're gonna use the double if formula, which is this one. So we start again, equal sign, if, tab, logic test. So Excel is asking for D cell which is this one, 50. If this cell is larger or equal, oh, larger or equal to 50, uh, semicolon and these are quotation marks, pass. Because that means that Excel will write pass if the person has 50 points or higher. Then we use semicolon again, and we use the next if function. So write if again, tab, uh, and we mark the cell again. And if this cell is, and now we can just write lower than 50, semicolon, these, uh, quotation signs, fail. And then we have to make two parentheses to close this one and press enter. And we have Excel has calculated that this person has passed the test. And we do the same thing here, shift, move down and control D to fill down. And now we can see that person who had 49 failed 30 failed, 90 passed, and so on. So that, that's the if uh, functions. Now we're gonna move on to uh, applying commands. So we use control page down. So I'm just gonna zoom in here so that you can see. And here we have a, like a normal profit and loss income statement. So now we're gonna use our acquired knowledge to finish the profit and loss and adjust to million euros instead of million sec, which is here. And we're gonna fill out the missing numbers. So we start by calculating gross profit and that we do by, this is pretty simple, it's just basic math. So equal sign, revenue, which is 100. And then we're gonna do plus, since it's a minus here. And Excel will calculate that 100 minus 50 equals 50. So not that hard actually. And we can move on down and we'll deal with the others later. And we see that personal expenses is minus 15. And we can set the other operating expenses to maybe equal 50% of the personal expenses, just for an example. So we do equal sign, that cell times 0.5. And we get that the operating expenses is minus 7.5. So the earnings before interest and taxes, which is rörelse resultat in Swedish, we calculate by doing equal sign, taking the gross profit, and again, plus, because there's minus here, plus, because there's a minus there, 
enter and the uh, earnings before interest in taxes will be 27.5 and net income pretty simple this one plus that one and we get the net income so now we're gonna do the same for these ones and uh, to do that we are gonna uh, press Control c on this one shift move along and press Control v and that will make excel calculate these ones as well and we move down to this one press Control c shift use the arrows Control v if you have a cursor, you know the deal. You just drag on the little square. So earnings before interest in taxes or EBIT. Control C, shift, move down, control V. Net income, control C, shift, move to the right, control V. And there we have it. So we're gonna move on to our next task, which is this one where we're gonna uh, translate everything we did before to um, in million euros instead. And we have the currency exchange rate here, which is 10. So revenue, 2015, the year of tw 2015, the revenue was 100. So we take 100 and divide it by the currency, currency exchange rate, and we get that the revenue in million euros is 10. And uh, yeah, we can move down. Or actually, we can make it pretty simple for us. This is a pretty, a little more advanced uh, shortcut, but it's very efficient. So since we have like the same, uh, same things here as we want here, we just want to uh, adjust the currency, currency exchange rate. We can um, go into the cell and uh, we press F4 to lock the currency exchange rate. So we do that and the cell will change to this one. You've done it before. Press enter. And uh, now we're gonna use uh, the, uh, another function, which is control C. We're gonna use shift to mark all of this. So when, once you've done that, control C, mark the entire area. We're gonna use uh, shift, press F10, or in the case if you have a cursor, you just right click. This will open the right click box. And we just wanna paste the formulas because we do not wanna paste, uh, we do not wanna change the formatting. And to do that, with the keyboard, you press F and it will select the formulas and then you press enter. And if you have a cursor, you just click here. So there we go, Excel has uh, calculated everything for us, though we have some uh, zeros here, which is not, uh, we, don't, we don't want them. So we can just use the knowledge you've learned, mark these areas and uh, press delete and they will disappear. And now also we maybe would like some uh, decimals to this. And to do that, we mark the entire area again. And uh, we use, uh, if you use the cursor, uh, it's pretty easy. You can just increase the decimal here. And if you would like to use the keypad, you mark the area, you press uh, Alt H, which will open the home pad here. And uh, you can see that here, it says a zero. So if you press a zero, that will increase the decimal. So now I'm gonna press zero and the decimals are increased. So there we go. Now we're gonna calculate sales growth. And um, we can't calculate for this year since we don't have the numbers for last year. So we'll start here equal sign and this is just simple math once again revenue that year minus revenue that year or divided by that year i mean minus one and we get 0 
because that's in decimal shape. We, will, we want it in percentage shape later, but we get to that. Gross margin. Oh, actually, we can do that in this year. Gross margin, equal sign. Gross profit divided by revenue, enter. EBIT margin, EBIT divided by revenue, net income margin, net income divided by revenue. There we have it in the decimal shape. Now we can just simply um, use shift, mark this area. Oh, sorry. Shift, mark this area all the way here. Oh, sorry, we're actually gonna do mark this, control C, mark this area. And uh, we can use uh, shift F10, F. So we paste the formulas as we entered before, press enter and Excel will calculate the formulas for us. And uh, we do the same with this one. So control C, shift, shift, F10, F, with the cursor, just mark the area, right click, click here. Excel will paste the formulas for you. And now we wanna change all of this to uh, a percentage. And it's really simple if you have the cursor, you can just click here and that will change it to percentage. Uh, if you don't wanna use the uh, cursor, you can go again, Alt H to open the home pad and you see that the percentage sign has a P. You can click P and that will be percentage. Also, we maybe would like to increase the amount of decimals here. So once again, you can use Alt H and zero there. So zero. And there we go. So the task was to do this, but also discussion. What can you make out of the numbers? So, well, if we see all of this here in the, uh, in the uh, spreadsheet here, uh, we can calculate or we can analyze the data we've had. So you can see here that the sales growth was pretty, pretty large between 2015 and 2016 with a 50%, but now we're seeing that the sales growth is slowing down. So by using Excel, we can actually see that uh, the growth of a company and its revenues are decreasing or increasing or uh, whatever we would like to see. We can also see that the gross margin has been falling a bit. So what can we make out of that? Well, maybe the company has lowered its prices due to competition and lower prices also leads to lower revenues and that also leads to lower gross margins. So you can like analyze, uh, use Excel to analyze uh, financial data, which is really nice and really cool. But now we're done here, we're gonna move to the, uh, we have two more uh, worksheets left. So we use control page down. We're gonna move to chart layout here. Gonna zoom in a bit for you. So when presenting information to, for example, clients, it should be of a high importance to be able to have a good layout and design. So task one and two, use the numbers provided to uh, select an appropriate graph and use different tools to make the layout as good as possible. So here's the data for this diagram. Um, and we can see that they have structured it the way that you can see the sales and the EBIT margin uh, throughout the years between 2015 and 2018. So what we want to do is to use this data, uh, this set of data, which is product segment and sales. And we want to create our own diagram here, uh, or chart. So to do this, we simply mark the area with a cursor you go to insert and you press, you can press recommended charts if you like, because uh, that will give you like an example of what Excel recommends for charts. 
And if you use the keyboard, you mark the area as we have uh, talked about before. And um, you use not Alt H this time, but you use Alt N because that will lead you to the insert uh, uh, file here. And if we want to use or see what Excel recommends for charts, we press R. So now we have like some charts here, Excel like think we should use. So you could use a pie chart, which is pretty good because you can see how much of each uh, product category the sales comes from. Uh, or, or you could use like a column, which we have here. And uh, we're gonna use that today. So we can click okay here. And uh, now if we would like to uh, make this one as good looking as this one, we can start by typing sales per product segment here and uh, right click on this one to fill out. We can use the same color. Uh, I like to remove these thingies here. So these lines, so I just press delete here. You can like you know, work yourself around a bit and try out what you like, uh, but yeah, if this is just, just to give you some inspiration on how to create your own charts. If you'd like to add data labels, you just right click, add data labels. You can like change the font to Times New Roman if you would like, change the color of the text, yeah. I think you get it. So that was task number one. Task number three, sort the data in table three in chronological order with the earliest at the top using the table function. So here we have date and price for example, an index. And uh, if we're gonna make a linear chart out of this, uh, it will actually be backwards because we have the uh, date closest to ourselves at the top and date further away from us at the bottom. And Excel is programmed so that would be backwards for some reason. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use the shift and arrow function to mark this entire area. And if you use the cursor, you mark it and right click. But for us you're using the keyboard, we use uh, Alt F10, oh, sorry. Uh, Alt, F. sorry. Yeah, you can just right click and uh, you will get to this one where it says sort. And we will sort from A to Z. So press that one. And as you can see now, we have the data furthest away from us, furthest away from us, um, or furthest away from us at the top. And now to make the chart, mark it again. You can press Alt N to get to insert. You can press uh, R to get recommended charts. Uh, no, we would, don't want those. So Alt N and you can use maybe a linear chart, which is N1 here, and you will get the price graph linear. So we can see how the index price has developed during these dates. And you format these the same way as you formatted this one, and um, Excel is pretty much learning by doing. So uh, if you would like to create nice uh, charts, just, uh, just practice. So we're gonna move on to our last but not least uh, worksheet of today, which is the formatting. So formatting is a vital part to keep your Excel sheets well-structured and easy to navigate. So our task is to use the commands to format this sheet so it's well-structured under the blue bar named income statement, which is this one. And we're gonna start by unmerging merged cells. And merged cells are cells that are like, yeah, merged, combined. And to do that with the keyboard, we're gonna press Alt H to open the home pad. And we're gonna press M, because you can see there it's merge and center. So we press M. Uh, and if you have the cursor, you just click here, of course. And we're gonna unmerge cells. So we press U. Now these cells are unmerged and uh, that uh, helps us a lot because this is just numbers that we don't want. 
So what we're gonna do now is to press and hold shift, mark three of these cells. Then we're gonna use another function, which is control and space. So we press control space, that will mark the entire, these three columns that you have, uh, uh, that you have marked. And we want to remove these. So our next function is control and then a minus. So control minus, that will remove them. And if you use a cursor, you can easily remove these by dragging here, click, hold and drag, right click and delete, and they will be deleted. Um, also, I forgot to mention that if you do something wrong, which you would like to undo, for example, if you write something and you would like to undo that, you can uh, press Control C or Z uh, to make it real clear. So Control Z or Z will undo what, what you did last. And so um, here we have some small cells which we're gonna do the same thing to basically. So go to the first cell, press and hold shift, mark all the cells with the arrows, control space to mark all of these columns and control minus to delete them. And you remember how to do with the cursor. So just do the same. And this one as well. Um, yeah, you can just have your cursor there, control space, control minus, that will remove them. And uh, yeah, so now we have removed all the, the uh, columns that we don't want to. So now we're gonna merge this one again. So what we do that is we start here, press shift, move our way down here, alt H, or if you use the cursor, just go to home, press merge and center or M and merge and center. So now we have a nice like headline for our income statement here. And um, yeah, now you can uh, start by adjusting other things such as here we can't even see the entire uh, text. So we wanna change the width of the cell. You can either do that by dragging the cursor which is pretty fast and easy. Uh, but if you for some reason would want uh, this one, this width to be, uh, if you want to do it with the cursor, you just mark a cell here. And uh, the uh, thing we're going to use here is uh, this one, adjust column width, and we use Alt H O W. So first Alt H, then an O, which we find which we find over here, O. So if you use the cursor, just click here. And W, column width. Now we get this one here, and uh, I have practiced a little, so I know that we're gonna need 35 in width. And we'll press enter, and that will make, yeah. That will change the width of the column to uh, 35, basically. And uh, we can go to here, for an example and uh, make all of these cells have the same uh, uh, size and width again. So we press Alt H and uh, we press O and W and here we can type eight. So now all cells have the same width but they don't have the same uh, font size. So we're gonna change that as well. And you can see here change font or change font size. Uh, so we're first gonna change the font size, Alt H F S, Alt H, and then F S, which is here. So if you have the cursor, you just click here, but F S. And we're gonna change the font size to uh, 14 for everything. So 14 and then enter. And uh, yeah, like now, if you want to be, uh, if you want to use the same font for everything as well, we use the other function here, change font, Alt H F F. So Alt H 
FF, which is that one there with the cursor, FF. And like uh, I always try to use Times New Roman because it's a safe card. And uh, yeah, you can never lose if you use Times New Roman. <laughs> so I would recommend that, uh, even though it's boring sometimes. But yeah, uh, so now we have it pretty nice structured here. Um, we're gonna do uh, another, some last changes to our formatting just to make it look good. So we're gonna do some bold formatting here on the, uh, like uh, the different kind of profitabilities we have in the company. So gross profit, we're gonna mark that bold and we're gonna use the function control plus B. So we mark it, control B, that would make it bold. If you use the cursor, you can drag as you know, control B or press there if you don't want to use the keyboard at all. So control shift arrow, control B and net profit control shift arrow, control B. So now we have like highlighted the different profitability, different levels of profitability in the company, uh, which is nice because it looks nice and you can find the profitability pretty easy each quarter here. And um, one thing I like to do is also to use the um, insert a top line, which is alt HBP, uh, or you go here and you go uh, top border. So we're gonna do control shift on the gross profit and alt H B P and now we can see that we have a nice line above here so that we can see that we have revenue cost of goods sold and then there comes the gross profit so again control shift to the end alt h b p we have the line control shift go to the end alt h b p control shift go to the end alt h b p so now we have lines above, borders above all the different levels of profitability. And if we would like to, we can end the, uh, the formatting by doing a line uh, around everything, borders around everything. And we press Alt H on this one, the cursor, B. And as you can see here, outside borders has the S. So we press S or just click it whatever you like, prefer, and you will get a nice board around here. And uh, one thing that I like to do to make my spreadsheets seem or look uh, even nicer is that I, I uh, delete all grid lines. Um, and it's this function, Alt W uh, V G. So we use Alt W, takes us to the view. If you have, if you use the cursor, and here you can unclick grid lines or press VG. And as you can see now, all our grid lines before is gone and we just have this, yeah, this nice format for our chart layout. So yeah, as I said before, um, we will post the, um, the video again uh, due to the uh, power outage that we had. And uh, uh, I will publish the, uh, the, this Excel file with all the right answers. So don't worry if you got anything wrong or anything, you can just click in there, see what formulas we used. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. And um, we'd like to thank you for participating today. And uh, uh, hopefully, I hope you will join Link because uh, in Link you get to learn how to use Excel on a more advanced level. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do within finance and uh, with, a, with the best experience in Excel. And uh, you can, uh, you definitely stand out if you have Excel experience uh, when applying for jobs or internships or anything. So I highly recommend you to join Link and um, join a research and analysis team if you want to become an active member or just come down to the lab and talk to us and we can explain more. But I think that's it for today. So 
Thank you very much.